Hello beautiful souls, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Infinity and this is Magnetize Yourself, where we talk about life, love, spirituality, and of course the law of attraction. In today's reading video, I am specifically reading into the energy of the Twin Flame Collective. So this is a collective Twin Flame reading. Many of these messages are meant to channel information about general energetic trends within the Twin Flame community worldwide. However, I do also tend to channel hyper-specific messages, so please, as always, do use your own intuition in really determining which messages are for you and which may be intended for others. Now I'm beginning today with the Energy Oracle Cards deck. I'm going to go ahead and set my own intention for this reading out loud. You can set your intentions either within your own mind or in the comments section, however you feel guided to set intentions for this reading. Or maybe you'll just choose to keep an open heart and mind. Maybe you don't feel guided to set a specific intention and that's perfectly okay as well. I really just, before I get into the messages, I intuitively want to say that as I was meditating, I was channeling this feeling of we are processing so much heaviness collectively that needs to be released in order to clear the way for the future of not only our individual twin flame connections, but also worldwide. We are essentially calling in a new way of thinking, behaving, and acting, especially when it comes to unconditional love specifically. I know many of you have been feeling that collective heaviness, that processing recently, so be extra kind and gentle to yourselves. So what messages can I channel for the Twin Flame Collective? And right away, of course, the anxiety card. What is someone listening to this reading feeling anxious about? The sun in reverse. Normally this card symbolizes a new beginning. So the fact that it's reversed tells me someone listening is feeling anxious about the future of this connection. I just hear someone saying, is a new beginning even possible? By the way, in my love word scramble, this is where I channel specific words. The words shirt and hospital came out. I heard specifically someone could have been sick recently or someone's counterpart could have been sick. I also see someone keeping or wearing the shirt of another. I also see someone who's kind of burying their head into someone's chest, kind of just like snuggling up to someone for lack of better wording. I'm trying to like channel what I'm getting specifically. These are just random specific words and images if those connect with you in any kind of way. The temple path reversed came out here. So this connects to life purpose, divine path. And I hear someone saying, I thought we knew where we were going, but now I feel so lost. Now I feel that this new beginning is out of sight and I feel this causing a lot of anxiety. I feel like for this person, this is kind of an ongoing sensation. I don't think it's something that happens for them every single moment, or at least for some listening, I feel like this is something they move in and out of. So sometimes they feel this heaviness, this kind of anxiety, and other times they feel this lightness, this connection. They may find themselves kind of vacillating between these highs of connectedness. I wanted to say fifth dimension, almost feeling like they are in the fifth dimension with their person. They're kind of taking this bird's eye view of everything. They feel very spiritually connected, very divine. But then I also feel this person may have moments of depths of anxiety, feeling really anxious about the future. This may specifically come, these feelings of anxiety may specifically come when this person is trying to formulate a clear plan for how to move forward into that future with their person. The card man holding a heart came out here as well. I heard someone say, you're holding my heart, but now what? It's like someone is aware that their heart is only for their divine counterpart. 
they can't get this person out of their mind, out of their energy. I mean, naturally, if this is a twin flame, twin flames are always very deeply connected to one another energetically, regardless of where they are physically or even where they stand relationship-wise or emotionally with one another. And I almost feel a kind of sadness, like it's a bittersweetness. Someone's like smiling and crying at the same time. That's like the kind of energy, like... I know that you're my person. I know that you have my heart. But at the same time, it's like there's something pulling on this person, some kind of anxiety. Yeah, and the card to come out here is appreciation in the reverse. So it's kind of this energy of... Okay, so literally I just hear for someone, this could only be for one person, but I hear someone saying like, you are my person, you've always held my heart, but I feel like you didn't fully appreciate me when you had me. I feel like you didn't fully value me. I feel like you, if, if not, if this underappreciation isn't felt by this person individually, it may be that this person feels as though the other didn't fully value this connection, this divine, beautiful connection, the way that they should have. And I feel that this caused the person I'm connecting with a lot of pain. What does the person I'm connecting with here need to know? What else is going on with this person? I feel these cards kind of going silent, so I'm actually going to go to the Soul's Journey deck here. This is one of the newer decks. I don't use this as frequently. By the way, in the love word scramble, the words one, acres, and riding, I specifically see someone riding horses, if that connects with someone. Forgiveness. I acknowledge that harboring resentment blocks the flow of love. What does someone need to forgive here? I'm hearing forgiveness in the sense of letting go. This may or may not actually involve another person. This could just be a letting go of some kind. What does this person need to forgive? What do they need to let go? What does this person need to let go? I'm actually going to go over to a different deck because I'm not pulling a card from here intuitively. I feel like there is a message in this other deck. So this is the Starry Beginnings deck. I do like to use my intuition just to pull from other decks as I feel guided. So let's see, what does this person need to forgive or let go? Be clear on what you want. Put action to your goals. Make them a reality. We'll get into more on that in a minute, but I want to pull a few more cards first to get a clearer picture of what's going on here. Life is an expression of you. Life is more than existing. Okay, I think I'm starting to get what I feel from the cards, but I do think there may be one more card in here to pull it all together. Can I get one more card from this deck? So the cards that came out here were be clear on what you want. Life is an expression of you and all is at your fingertips. What has been created by one can be had by all. So something I'm noticing right away about these cards is all of these cards feel very centered around growth, around expansion, around moving forward, soul evolution. But also I'm sensing a kind of lonely energy from these cards, a kind of misunderstood energy, I feel that someone I'm connecting with here, it's almost as though they are on this spiritual path that's very few, perhaps even no one around them physically in the 3D understands. And I feel like this person is kind of struggling with this because I just heard I have no one to go to advice for, like to go to for advice, like I can't consult someone in my life about this. The state of Florida came out in the word scramble if that connects with you or your person. Also compass and changing. With compass changing, I heard like someone's having difficulty getting clear on their own internal compass, like getting a clear read on how to move forward with their life or with this connection. And what's making it more difficult is they may feel as though the people around them are on a very different journey. 
I'm feeling specifically that the person connecting with this reading is on a highly spiritual journey. Their journey is about soul expansion. It is about creating something beautiful, something soulful from this life, whether that's within their relationships, within their work. And I feel that the people around them are much more 3D focused. And I mean, literally physically around them. I see these people in this person's physical environments. I feel like these people are much more literally focused. I heard the word logical. So they may have a lot of people around them who are logical to a fault where they don't really believe in the more spiritual side of life in the way that you do, whoever you are connecting with this, I feel like you see like energy. I don't know how else to say it. It's like you see people's energy. You see, you feel, not just feel, but almost literally can see, can sense the energies and intentions of other people. Energies affect you in special kinds of ways. You're highly sensitive. You have all of these spiritual gifts, but other people I feel physically around you, they both don't understand your gifts. And because they don't understand your gifts, they don't understand your purpose. And also I feel it's like the work you do, the purpose that you have here, it wasn't really meant for these people literally physically around you. It was meant to actually bring something greater into the world at large, perhaps to, to create something online. It could be an online business. It could be, could be building a brand online, doing whatever it is that you're doing. I, again, this won't be for everyone. I'm just speaking to some many different people here through these different specific messages, but I just feel like whatever you're passionate about, whatever you're doing, the people around you, they, I just see them literally blinded. They are blind to the power and the effect of what you're doing. And for you, I feel this causes a lot of feelings of frustration and loneliness and even some confusion at times. Why is this person feeling so confused? The words slow, heavy, intent came out. Someone could have been camping recently if that connects with you in some way or may enjoy camping. With slow and heavy, I just, I feel like that's the way that the energy around you feels sometimes, slow moving and heavy. Financial constraints in the reverse. This is the energy of breaking ties, breaking free. I feel like this is you. I feel like you are the one that is breaking free. This could literally be financially because this is traditionally a financial kind of monetary sort of card or indicator. But I feel for some of you, this may go far beyond or much deeper than just finances or money or work. This could just be you in all areas of your life breaking out of limited thinking breaking out of limited belief systems you could have been raised with or could have bought into over the course of your life. And I just, I see someone just like fighting against these binds that have always held them back. These invisible binds. It's like, these are, these are blocks of some kind, either within their own thinking or things that they've been told. And I feel, I just, I heard that metaphor of you know where they talk about how you train an elephant when it's young? I forget exactly how this metaphor goes because this is just popping into my head. I can't remember the specifics, but it's like they would tie like a baby elephant or something to a pole when it was really young or um, bind it up or something when it was young. So it wasn't capable of breaking free of those binds because it didn't have the strength. But then when it grew older, it wouldn't even attempt to break the binds, even though it had the strength. And I feel like somehow that is you. It's like you've tried and tried and tried to break out of something, to do something like to do something big. It's hard to find the specific words for it. It's like you are breaking out of generations of limited thinking in some way, whether this is in relation to money, to work, to life purpose, to relationships, unconditional love. And I feel like sometimes you feel like you've always been that elephant that at one point you were too weak to break those vines, but you still tried. And maybe for a while you stopped trying because you thought what's the point, but you always continue to eventually get back to trying to break those binds that have always held you back. And what spirit wants you to know is now you are like that elephant that now has the strength to break free. You have the strength now that you didn't always have in the past. So don't stop 
it's like just here like don't stop now it's like you're so close to breaking free don't stop now that's like what i keep hearing the card happy family reversed i heard broken family that's what came out here for someone but if it's not literally a broken family there's something here about a family breaking up or some kind of a i see someone this won't be for everyone but i do see someone who is either at present feeling like an outcast within their own literal physical family or someone who is processing childhood trauma that involved them somehow being separated by certain members of their family so they could have not seen certain immediate family members very often or these people may not have literally physically abandoned them, but emotionally, they could have felt abandoned emotionally or mentally by these people in their life and they could be processing that right now. Or alternatively, these binds that I was speaking about could just be directly related to generational curses, to ways of thinking that were passed down through, through the generations within their family that they're now breaking out of. Now, if this is resonating with you in the extended version of this reading, I will be channeling more specifics on exactly what I feel these constraints, these binds are for certain individuals and how they are breaking free of them. So if you are interested in that, the link to the extended Extended is in the pinned comment and description box under this video but the strategy card also came out here and I see whoever this person is I feel like you may have recently established some kind of a goal or a plan to reach your goals or if not you may be in the process of somehow getting organized or taking action steps towards some kind of a uh, I wanted to say new goal, but I don't think for, for many people, I don't think it's new. I think it's something you've wanted for a long time that you are now beginning to move towards in a more visceral kind of way. And angel of love came out here. I just heard love is the portal, specifically self-love, but love just in its purest form. It's like love is the portal to all of these things you're trying to shift, change, and accomplish. I heard you can't do these things without love, but with love, all things are possible. That's what I keep hearing. In fact, I'm hearing you may want to take that on as a mantra. With love, all things are possible because I do feel that the people around you may underestimate the power and the beauty of unconditional love, of self-love and pure love towards others. And I feel that you need to be reminded that the love you're capable of giving to yourself and others is immensely powerful and valuable and important in this world. I feel like you could have been someone whose gift of sensitivity, if you are someone who identifies as empathic or highly sensitive, this gift of sensitivity, energetic sensitivity, may have been undervalued. So you could have been someone who was told that you were too sensitive or overly sensitive or something along those lines. I do just want to reshuffle the cards here because I know we've been getting into a lot of more personal kind of individual messages, but I do want to speak more specifically to the twin flame connection. Someone commented, I'm laughing because I saw a comment that said the garden and the gate comes out in every reading and that's so true. This card does come out a lot, but here it is again in the reverse position. I just heard you're putting up the protection you need to grow this metaphoric garden. Specifically, I do feel this in connection with your person, with your twin flame. It's like there's something about someone learning how to eliminate, I just heard the weeds, the weeds being these negative external influences and to put up the gates, the gate being the boundaries, the energetic protection in order to plant seeds with their divine counterpart within those walls in that weeded out soil that will actually have a chance to grow and i actually hear someone saying we wouldn't have had a chance in the environment we were in before when we wanted it to work i hear someone actually looking back at a time when their connection was different than it is now it almost seemed like they were more physically 3d connected in this different time that has since passed but what I hear this person saying on a higher self level is 
if we had tried to make things work the way that they were, these weeds would have overgrown our garden like animals would have trampled our garden because we didn't have that gates, that protection, those strong boundaries. We didn't weed out the garden first. We didn't clear the space for this beautiful garden we were trying to plant together. I know that's kind of an extended metaphor there, but I do feel that for someone listening, this will really connect. It's like these, yeah, this second chakra just came out here, the sacral chakra connecting with intimacy. And I feel that there was some lesson to be learned about protecting your connection and treating it as sacred by eliminating or weeding out these negative influences. These could be literally karmic influences, third parties, family members, opinions of other people, facets of your life that weren't aligned with this path. But then at the same time, I see this like cultivation of true intimacy between the two of you. And of course, there's always, there's always deep energetic intimacy between twin flames, but depending on how energetically blocked or open they are, this intimacy may manifest differently in the emotions, in the actual physical connection that they share, in the words that they feel comfortable enough to speak to one another in the physical. And I do feel, I want to know more information here. What was going on with this? With this second chakra card, the sacral chakra, how is this intimacy opening up within this twin flame connection? The sun card in the reverse position. This is really interesting. I feel this connecting back to that delayed new beginning. It's like through the delay of this new beginning, the exact same thing that was causing someone so much anxiety is actually somehow how this deeper level of intimacy is being cultivated in this twin flame connection. How is this delay cultivating a new beginning? Community in the reverse. So this card signifies reversed it's like a loneliness and isolation kind of a hermit mode and i just heard self-reflection it may be that through the delay of this new beginning it caused someone to need to be alone with themselves or if not literally alone to be physically perhaps or emotionally a bit separate from their twin in order to do a deep level introspection the words reason experiments and view came out I just heard like, okay, so if someone's been going through some kind of a separation with their twin, I almost feel that part of the reason for this separation was to ultimately create this greater intimacy, manifested emotional, physical intimacy between the two of you by actually having this period of loneliness, of isolation. It's like somehow this isolation, ironically, is a portal through which these twin flames are stepping into a more healed, more balanced connection with one another. Yeah, so with Angel of Love, Happy Family Reversed and Patience, I see someone moving from this happy family reverse card, potentially a literal broken family situation from their past, inner child wounds being healed here. Moving from this into unconditional love for themselves, recognizing their own worth, their own worthiness. Again, going back to the garden and the gate reversed, learning how to weed out negative influences, build this beautiful gate of protection around themselves and ultimately around this connection as well. And also if if anyone who is listening has been feeling a bit frustrated by this process, I feel I'm speaking now to the person at the beginning who was having feelings of anxiety you're really being guided into having patience, not just for patience's sake, but you are actually being taught through this experience of the timing going wrong, how to move into deeper levels of trust for the divine timing of your life. I want to know more because this keeps coming up. What are these negative influences? By the way, the words state and foreign. So there could be something about two people being from different states if you're in the US or from different countries altogether. 
There could be some geographical distance here. So who are these negative influences in this person's life? Physical, everyone, and record are the words that came out. That's interesting. It's interesting I asked who this person was and the word that came out was everyone, which of course doesn't literally mean that everyone in this person's life is negative. But what I actually heard from this word is everyone has the potential to reflect back to you where you are energetically so it's like what i'm hearing is when you don't take the time to protect your own energy on a daily basis to clear your energy to remain in a high vibrational state of mind i'm hearing that you leave yourself susceptible to attracting negativity negative influences and energy from really anyone that you meet but the opposite is also true that when you really focus on yourself on cultivating a strong bulletproof kind of sense of self a strong aura strong energy field and remain in that positive high vibrational very unconditionally loving space state of being then you can attract back to you at times positive experiences with even people in your life who before could have been potentially could have been negative in certain ways in the past it's kind of like a weird energy coming through here it's hard to find the exact words for so hopefully you're connecting with that intuitively it's like there's just such an importance of clearing grounding and raising your own energy regularly so as to not attract these negative energies out of other people around you because i hear you're a highly magnetic person your energy has such an impact on the people around you because you have a very powerful energy a very powerful aura and this like any powerful energy has the ability to work both directions so i'm hearing it's so vital for yourself and for the environments that you're in socially to maintain this high kind of energy because you do have a very powerful impact on the people around you that's kind of just a side message for someone who's listening but if that is you, I would really recommend establishing a morning meditation routine. Personally, I meditate with subliminals every single morning. And the reason I do this is because I actually tried using the law of attraction and really delving into spirituality for years and didn't see a lot of literal physical manifested results in my life until I started meditating with subliminals. And the reason that it took me so long to see these results is because because I was addressing the conscious 5% of my mind through all of these kinds of law of attraction techniques and rituals, but I was completely ignoring the 95% of my mind that was actually completely unconscious. So the unconscious mind really dominates all of our unconscious motivations, the things we say and do when we think that we're self-sabotaging in life or relationships. All of this is actually coming from motivated by the conscious mind mind the silent parts of our mind the parts we aren't always fully aware of so subliminal meditation is particularly powerful because it actually addresses these blocks and negative thought patterns where they are stored in the subconscious it's like taking out a weed by the root rather than trying to just cut off its leaves if that kind of makes sense so personally i started using a subliminal i created myself and also have available on my website that is called my seven chakra clearing subliminal it addresses blockages and negative patterns of thinking it addresses blockages and negative thought patterns as they are stored within any of the seven chakras it contains almost 100 unconscious affirmations targeted to each of these chakra centers and is really just a great comprehensive energy tool that's why i love just using it in the morning to fully clear my energy ground myself energetically and this subliminal comes from my website soundandsoulful.com so as you can see on the screen i've created over 100 subliminals for all areas of life so i have subliminals for physical changes for mood shifts for energy clearing for 
specific material manifestations like material success, business success. And when it comes to twin flames, I do have an entire section of subliminals dedicated exclusively to the twin flame path because I am so passionate about this journey, about this path as a twin flame myself. So this seven chakra clearing, as well as any other subliminals I recommend during this reading will be linked in the pinned comment in description. If you'd like to explore more about about them. So I do just want to get back into potentially who these negative influences. I was referring to these people as weeds, although I know that sounds really demeaning. I don't mean to negatively objectify these people because of course we're all human. None of us are inherently good or bad. We have a blend of negative and positive kinds of energies within us that change and shift from moment to moment. But I do feel that if you're listening to this, there's a good chance there are certain negative influences, either people, environments, something along those lines, potentially even a job, a workplace that could be lowering your vibration consistently. So again, not to necessarily label these things as good or bad, but I feel that when you are around these things, you consistently find yourself feeling depleted energetically, feeling exhausted, feeling drained, I heard confused, so one way to identify these potential negative influences is you may leave conversations with these people or you may leave these places if it's a place feeling almost like your internal compass of intuition is spinning, like you can't really fully hear yourself anymore, you can't fully connect with your intuition anymore, you feel almost a little bit spiritually disconnected because you absorbed all of these kinds of chaotic energies from these other people or places. By the way, the words instrument and introduced came out in the word scramble, if that connects with you in any way. So who are these negative influences, these metaphorical weeds? Okay, so... A card to come out from the Queen of the Moon Oracle is Purity, the Snow Moon card. For some reason, I'm seeing like a ski lodge or a house in the mountains, if that connects with someone, in snow also. I am going to read a little bit about this card from the guidebook. So the guidebook says, Look for the simplest and cleanest solution. Understand your motives for doing what you are doing. Be as clear as possible in your communication. The word purity now seems to have a kind of loaded moral quality. Anytime I mention the word, people mostly think of how it's used in religious or in morals. The purity I refer to here is the purity of the silver moon on the unmarked snow, the simple purity of intention that nature demonstrates, the purity of clean water in a mountain stream, the purity of one single purpose. The Cambridge Dictionary defines this kind of purity as being clean or free from harmful substances. And I guess in our world, so full of pollution and damage to the environment, that may well be hard to find. There are good reasons to strive for a kind of positive purity in our lives. This is really interesting. By the way, I'm strongly feeling guided to tell you if you were connecting with any of those guidebook messages, you may also find it really beneficial to utilize clear quartz. I don't talk much about crystals, but I do use them from time to time. And this is another great kind of energy clearing tool you might find yourself feeling drawn to at times, or you may already be drawn to this crystal or may have already purchased a crystal like this, which could just be another sign that unconsciously on a soul level, energetically, you realize that you have this need to clear out these kinds of negative energies. It's really interesting. This card came out here because we did speak on purifying your energy on i i use the metaphor weeding out this garden but i hear this is important in two respects it's like there's two sides of this kind of so-called purity on the one side i see it's important to value environments that assist you in raising your vibration 
rather than environments that feel as though they are polluting your vibration or causing you to feel like you are absorbing all of this negativity, all of this kind of toxic energy. So this could be in the workplace. It could be literally a social environment, limiting time with these kinds of people that you are aware of having this negative influence on your energy. But alternatively, I'm hearing this other side of this coming up here again as well of internal purification, purifying your own energy on a daily basis in order to and i'm also hearing there's something over and over about like being very very clear with others and with yourself which i feel for someone who's listening to this this is actually something that's been difficult for you to do recently because i feel that you do get around these people or places or maybe just get stuck in your own mind and again feel that internal compass spinning feel that kind of confusion in your being and i'm hearing that it's very vital for you right now to be very clear on who you are on what you desire to create for yourself in this connection in your life to be clear about what you know what your soul knows what your soul has always known about this person about this connection about your soul mission however this applies to you and from that space of internal clarity being able to then clearly communicate with others and set boundaries with others when necessary truly valuing that pure purpose that pure intention within yourself above the opinions or ideas of these others yeah and i do feel this will strongly connect with a divine feminine listening specifically because the thinking woman did come out here as well Women tend to, or feminine energies, those who identify as the divine feminine, it may not necessarily be a woman, but if you are someone who connects as the divine feminine, very often you may be someone who actually struggles to set boundaries. There is a very, very strong mother wound that gets handed down collectively, generation after generation, of over self-sacrifice. It's like nurturing taken to the extreme of completely giving away oneself and losing one's sense of self altogether for the sake of pleasing or being of comfort to others. And many feminine energies struggle with doing this very early on in relationships, usually first with their own parents and then usually later on in their formative romantic relationships as well. And I feel this could be a pattern, a wound being cleared out for someone right now. So what other information can I get about this? And as I said that, the Cornucopia card came out. I just heard from this card this very strong message of peace, of all is well, all is coming to you, trust divine timing. This is a really beautiful card to kind of tie together all of these messages. And I see like, I just feel spirit kind of guiding you and saying, I wish you could see what I see. In fact, you can see what I see when you close your eyes, when you're there with yourself, when you envision these future realities that are so beautiful. You aren't just seeing these nonsensical visions. You're seeing actual futures that are possible for you, for yourself, for your connection, for your work, and for your life, whatever's important to you right now. You are more powerful and gifted than you realize. And the more you realize just how powerful and gifted you are, the more you will manifest the things that you are desiring to create in your life. That's what I'm hearing for this person. Just a really beautiful message here. Okay, so now I want to speak specifically to the divine feminine and the physical. You guys know I like to do these physical versus higher self or 3D versus 5D messages for the masculine and the physical. So what does the divine feminine want to say at a physical 3D level? What is the divine feminine going through? Envy in the reverse. The thing that stood out to me about this card is someone that is standing in a doorway and on one side is darkness, on one side is a light. And I just heard stepping into the light. How is this divine feminine stepping into the lights?
Longing for home, homesick for the stars. That's the first card to come out here. I heard you're coming home to yourself. But in the meantime, feeling this feeling of emptiness, it may even literally feel like a homesickness. I heard I feel homesick for a place I've never been. I'm also feeling a divine feminine connecting this directly to the masculine, like you are my home and I'm homesick for you. Lifting the veil, questioning everything, anything unaligned must go. Yeah, so this is really speaking to that purification that we talked about earlier, really eliminating those negative influences and allowing her life to fall into alignment. What else is going on with this Divine Feminine in the 3D world right now? Well, the cards here have kind of gone silent, so I'm actually going to go to one of the other decks to see if we can get any final messages here. Regrets. I know that I cannot change the past. I want to get more information about this regret card. This is really interesting. Why is this Divine Feminine feeling regret? Why is this Divine Feminine feeling regret? Wow, the masculine. I have a wave of goosebumps. So there's something about the masculine that is causing this Divine Feminine to feel regretful. Let's go to the Romance Angels deck to get clarification for this. I heard like, I feel regret that you weren't ready in the physical. That's what I'm hearing from a feminine. Passion. What else? Why is this feminine feeling regret? This person may be coming to you in dreams. You may have had dreams, divine feminine listening to this about your masculine. Potentially that won't be for everyone. Release your ex. Interesting. So there could be karmic energies at play here, potentially even a literal ex romantically speaking. I'm trying to get more details on this because I know a lot of you are going to be curious. I just see someone here. It's like this divine feminine has so much passion. I hear her saying so much love and nowhere to put it, like nothing to do with it. So much passion. It's like boiling over inside of her. And yet she feels like because of these, I just keep wanting to say karmic situations. I feel her in this kind of lonely, isolated energy right now. And I feel like the regret she's feeling regarding the masculine has to do with someone in this situation who is dealing with karmics that they haven't yet fully let go, whether it is literally a karmic romantic or just a karmic cycle they're breaking free from. Because I do feel this X and release your X could be symbolic, like release your past that is keeping us from being together. That's what I'm hearing from someone here. Like there's something, it's like X here could be symbolic for something in this masculine's past that's actually preventing them from being together in the future or this divine feminine perceives it this way. And she's like pleading with him in the physical to let this thing go, whatever it is, whether it's a fear, an insecurity, a pattern, or literally a person. Yeah, and the card to come out here is fruition also. I do just want to read a little bit about this card. I know we're kind of getting deeper into these messages for the 3D than we usually do, but I just feel this was kind of a complex message that really needed to be shared. So let's see what the guidebook says here to see if I can channel any messages. As the seasons turn, there is always a time when all the potential of the spring beginnings is manifest. When we are able to bring something to fruition, whether it be a planting, a project, or a change in ourselves, it is the perfect time to celebrate all that we are grateful for and to mark our achievements. 
These times of high energy are also times to really focus on your body as they can be quite taxing on our systems. This is really, really interesting. I see this almost kind of like a future card, kind of saying like, I feel this speaking back to those weeds being taken out of the soil in order to make way for this metaphoric garden to be planted by this divine feminine and divine masculine counterpart. It's like we're clearing the air, we're clearing the ground, we're clearing the way to create this full-blown future together. But in the meantime, I hear this divine feminine at times and her physical self saying, but at times I still can't help feeling regret that it didn't happen the way that I wanted it to initially or when I thought it was going to happen. That's kind of the energy of what I'm feeling from this person. And of course, this will apply differently depending on you and your situation. So only take whatever resonates with you, however it resonates. But I am going to turn now to the Divine Masculine and his physical 3D self and see what's going on with him and his energy. Journey in the reverse. I just heard I'm choosing to stay, but you don't fully know that yet or you don't fully trust that yet. This is really interesting. How is this masculine choosing to stay? I'm almost tearing up as I say this. I feel like there's some level of distrust here where like the feminine doesn't fully trust the masculine to, and this is of course all coming from a very human, physical, 3D, sometimes ego-based perspective. But I do feel at times there's a divine feminine who feels like, how can I trust you're going to stay? And I don't feel like I'm not sure that this is even literally physically, although it may be, it could be even emotionally. Like, can I trust you to be honest with me, to support me, to be there for me, to be loyal to me? And I hear this masculine in his 3D, this is, by the way, these are 3D messages. This is something he's consciously connecting with. This isn't just like a higher self soul message here, although those are very meaningful as well in their own right. But I hear him saying like, I just heard I'm staying this time, but I feel for some reason he either hasn't said that out loud or he has and the feminine doesn't believe it. One or the other, that's kind of what I'm getting. The words hit, guess, and tropical came out if that connects with you in some way. So what does this masculine mean when he says that he's choosing to stay? What's going on here? What does this masculine mean when he says he's choosing to stay? Interesting, the purity card came out again for the masculine. So I'm seeing here that it's not just the feminine being guided to purify her life from these negative energies. I hear the masculine saying, it's like, I am committed to the purity of our connection, even if you don't see that in the physical or hear that through my physical words yet. And when I say purity of this connection, it's hard to find the words to exactly what I'm trying to say, but I feel like this masculine, it's like, he himself is purifying those things from his life that are somehow or in the past have been holding back this connection. Now in the extended, I will get into specifics on what these things are that could have been preventing or holding back this connection that the masculine is now releasing, whether it's a person, a place, whatever it might be. I will be channeling details on that in the extended. So that is linked on my Patreon page in the pinned comment and description box under this video. But for now, the cards that came out were acceptance, envy, and purpose. This is really interesting. I want to get more details to channel some information on these cards. So what is happening with this masculine in the physical? Seeing the card Envy, I instantly thought root chakra. There could be some root chakra healing happening for this masculine. In regards to feeling secure emotionally in romantic relationships, 
this could have been a masculine who was either literally jealous in romantic relationships had a jealousy issue or i heard control issue also so this could be a masculine who actually had a root chakra imbalance and this caused him to feel very deeply insecure in romantic relationships and led him to potentially act out in certain ways that push the feminine away. This won't be for everyone, but I am seeing this for some and I will channel more specifics on what I feel may be the energetic causes of this root chakra imbalance as well as how this is shifting for this masculine. That will be in the extended, which again is in the pinned comment and description. But the card to come out here is strategy. So with the strategy card coming out here, I just see something forward thinking or forward moving. I feel like this masculine could be thinking about or even planning for the future of this connection within his own mind, but I feel he's keeping the feminine in the dark about this or not potentially speaking much about this out loud. He may actually be the kind of person in general who isn't very open about communicating his thoughts and intentions all the time. He might be kind of slow to share these things he might take a long time to kind of formulate something in his mind i'm getting kind of an earth energy here so he might have earth signs strong in his chart if this message is for you and yeah the last card to come out here is door to personal healing and happiness in the reverse so it's like in spite of all of this this planning this movement from this root chakra wounding, this insecurity and potential acting out coming from that insecurity is shifting into something else. But I feel like this is still in the process of happening. And that card, that door to personal healing and happiness reversed is simply signaling to us that there is still healing that needs to take place in order to bring in this, I feel more manifested reunion that the feminine may be desiring or thinking about at this time also and again only take what resonates however it connects with you these are many different specific messages for different people also i will be leaving a link to a root chakra clearing subliminal if you are someone who is connecting with a root chakra wound either within you or the masculine connected with feelings of deep-seated insecurity or kinds of insecure emotional kinds of issues that may be manifesting within your connection if you are seeing this happen in your twin flame counterpart know that this is a sign that something within your connection energetically is out of balance and this does go both directions although we do often manifest energy wounds and blocks differently in the physical from our twin so it can be hard at times to pinpoint them but we do always mirror one another's energy on an energetic level perfectly which is why i would also recommend a twin flame seven chakra clearing subliminal this is designed to clear out any blockages to fully giving and receiving unconditional love within a twin flame connection and the reason we focus upon unconditional love blocks in this subliminal specifically is because it is only and always our own blocks to unconditionally loving ourselves or another person that manifest themselves in different ways through different chakra centers that prevents us from from deepening and manifesting our bond in the physical with our twin flame. That is what we come here to heal, what we come here to transcend, to learn, and then to show an example of to others. Twin flames, a, a major part of the twin flame purpose, very generally speaking, is simply to be a beacon of unconditional love and a very dark and conditionally loving world so the link to this twin flame seven chakra clearing is in the pinned comment and description box as well so i'm just going to pull one card from the roomy oracle deck and then we'll head over to the extended for more love related messages from both the masculine and the feminine but can i just get one final message from the roomy oracle deck what is one final message from the Twin Flame Collective? Okay, so the card to come out here is Passion of the Wild Red Mother. Interesting. I'm actually going to read a little bit about this card. Don't ask the conscious ones about the wine. Behold the glowing effect of it in the eyes of the drunks. Rumi, bring me your unreasonableness, your insanity, 
your love without reason, and your passion, the passion that makes you crazy and shoes all logical restraint from your mind. Leave your ordered thoughts, sensible plans, and appropriate attire at my door. Put on your animal fur and sing to me in gibberish. When my beautiful goats die, I make drums from their skins and their spirits live, live on, in my passionate play. When my birds drop their feathers, I gather them and put them in my hair. Come drum with me. As I place feathers in your hair and we honor the spirits of my animals, of your animal nature too, wild and free as you are in truth, stick your tongue out and growl at those who try to tame you with guilt, shame, and fear. Do not think I give a damn for any of their silly games. Those games of reason and logic. Of course, you should do it this way, they say. It makes sense. But I care not for what makes sense. I care for what brings you alive. So guys, that is all that I have for you today in this Twin Flame reading. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did receive any kind of meaningful message from this reading, do feel free to let us all know in this community in the comments what message connected with you personally. Also, if the messages were resonating, you can head over to the extended version of this reading for more details. We will address all of the questions that we presented in the reading, as well as channeling more specific love-related messages from both the Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine. All of the subliminals I recommended during this reading are also linked in the pinned comment and description, so you can explore those as well. I hope you have a wonderful, beautiful rest of your week and weekend. I will be now posting again on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time so that we can chat together in the live readings today. I know that I was sick a few weeks ago. So I got out of the habit of doing these three times a week readings, but I really did enjoy chatting with you all and connecting with all of you, so I will be doing that again. You can follow me on Instagram at Magnetize Yourself for more regular Twin Flame energy updates and posts. Have a wonderful weekend, and I will talk to you again in Monday's reading.